Hi guys, welcome back to another DJ video. Now today I wanted to quickly do a video on some of the gear I will be taking to Computex with me in my camera bag. Now I've had a lot of people asking uh, on the page and on YouTube what video gear I use and so on. So I pretty much fly out in a few hours. I waited this long because I just received this bag, this awesome camera sort of backpack bag, multi-purpose bag from the guys at Mindshift Gear. And actually I had never really even heard of them until I started researching for new bags. Uh, I was looking for something that definitely had a laptop compartment, um, had a lot of compartments, versatility, uh, wasn't oversized, and didn't have crazy colors. I find that a lot of them really stand out and I didn't really want that and I didn't want to make it look like an obvious uh, sort of camera bag for certain reasons. Uh, so the guys at Mindshift Gear sent me this bag. This is the uh, First Flight uh, 30 liter and we'll just have a quick look. Um, I will be reviewing this bag once I get back from Computex. So my plan is to use it at Computex and future events and then give my thoughts how this went at Computex because I've, I've had this bag for about an hour already and there's no way I can review this bag after re receiving it in such a short time. So I'll definitely use it, check it out. As you can see, you've got a full uh, compartment for camera gear. My previous bag sort of only had a compartment this big and the rest was just like a storage component. So you got a full compartment there. Now bear in mind, I don't have a lot of sort of cameras when it comes to camera gear. I only have one lens, I have a GH5, and then I have a camcorder for those quick moments when I need video to be just right. But I do have a lot of items I can use these other pockets for. You don't have to just use them for camera gear. So that's all sort of padded there. You get lots of extras in there. You also get like a lens uh, stabilizer mount that Velcro's in there, and you get the raincoat as well. You've got tons of little pouches here. These are nice, they're all mesh and they're see-through as well. I like it when you have see-through uh, pockets on bags because you can see what devices you put in them because you may be packing it now, but in a few days, you'll probably forget what is has gone in there. Uh, you also got like a hydro port on the side. Now I believe that's only in the 30 liter and the 40 liter. So you put one of those like camel sort of, uh, sort of uh, water bags in there and the sort of tube pops out. The, um, the top there. Now another reason why I was looking at this bag specifically is it's got this lumbar support. It's really hard to show you on camera, but up here you can pull out this whole brace and it goes up and down and there's little segments that so shows you what stages that's at. Um, it's hard to show you, but this clip, uh, the top clip clips onto that support bracket and then you've got these sort of padding that clips onto the, the padding down here. So you can adjust that and it will change the tension on where the bag pulls from depending on your height and size. And now apart from that, it's got these sort of stabilizing ones for trekking and stuff like that. You can also push these around, push these around to the front like that, which is probably good for like when you're in an airport and stuff like that. I will be using this as carry on. You don't have these big things flapping around. But apart from that, the padding overall is just insane. You've got so much around here. And that's a big problem I have with backpacks is the padding. And then of course, another feature I like is having the uh, the side sort of hand strap and it's got the one on top as well. I think having the side on is a nice sort of touch as well. And then you've got a heap more pockets all over it, but I won't spend too much time on that because I will be doing a full review once um, I've come back from Comitex. Now let's look at the camera gear that I use. Now I can't show you the camera I'm recording this on because obviously I'm recording the camera using the camera now, but um, I use the GH5 of course. Now main sort of benefits for this is you get the 4K 60p uh, which is really nice and you pretty much got the dual SD card recording which I use. I have two 64 gig um, Extreme Pros. I've got a 32 gig one here for my camcorder. Yeah, so then 95 a read and 90 right, which is plenty enough for 4K uh, 60p. Uh, I only have one lens for it. I picked up the very, very expensive. This is the Panasonic Lumix G. Uh, this is the Leica 1.4, uh, 12 millimeter. So there's no zoom, it's a prime. 1.4, really, really nice uh, out of focus shots uh, for the background, which is nice. I did have a few other lenses, but once I got this lens, I was really just using this lens. And for me, doing photography and videos on sort of computer gear and review, you don't need a plethora of lenses. Uh, you're not like a, a full-time photographer doing weddings, doing different sceneries, pretty much everything's the same. It's either down here doing reviews or it's at events where um, not a lot of options are required. So that's the, um, the main camera gear I use there. Pretty much 99% of my videos are done in that. Then I have a Sony, what's this one? This is the uh, FDR AX53. Um, it's not a bad little unit. Um, the video is nowhere near as good as say like a DSLR or the Micro Four Thirds like the DH5, but it just gets you that video when you want it to be 100%, um, whether it's just at an event, doing something quick. Um, I will tell you that autofocus, on uh, camcorders, I've used a few camcorders in the past, is just um, 
is just awesome. You pretty much cannot fault autofocus. There just literally is none. You can walk around and you don't have like on DSLRs or micro four thirds, if you've got autofocus on, walking around, depending on your settings, you've got the autofocus on. I know the GH5 does have improved uh, autofocus settings. You can uh, select the responsiveness and the speed, but you still get, um, if you've got it on like a fast setting, you get the little stuttering when it's trying to lock on. You don't get any of that on a client camcorder. It's just instant. So I do like to have this on hand in case I'm having issues with the GH5. I can just pull this out and just walk around and I know I'll have a decent video, good enough for Facebook and YouTube and everything will be nice and in focus as well. Um, apart from that, it's got a really nice stabilizer. Once you pop open the uh, pop open the camera, turn it on, it's actually got a sort of a gimbal on the lens. I'll see if we can pick this up on the video, but you can see the lens is sort of moving around separate to the camera. That is a nice little feature as well. So stabilization is really nice on this camera. Now, speaking of stabilization, um, I recently picked up a, I think it's called a Zion crane, something like that. Um, just a gimbal, now, this is one here. I needed a pretty beefy one, because especially with the GH4 and that lens I got on, brings it up to about 1.2 kilos. I think this has a payload of about 1.3, 1.4. Um, the more you put on it, you're just gonna drain your batteries. Unless you're putting like five kilos on, it just won't work. But yeah, the, basically the more you're maxing this out closest to the payload or slightly over, the batteries will drain out. Um, I haven't tested this fully for a long amount of time, but they say you get about six hours or so, and the batteries just sit underneath. You have two of them that go in there. Um, I won't turn this on now. You're not meant to turn it on without any sort of payload on it. But um, from what I've been testing this out, it is a nice little unit. It connects to your phone. You got full control through your phone. You can check the battery. You can calibrate it on your phone. And on the back, it's also got like a little joystick, so you can control the pan axis and some more axes just by the little knob on there as well. So I'll be definitely testing that out at Computex. I'll be pairing with the GH5. The GH5 does have pretty good, uh, it's now got built-in stabilization from the GH4. So working these together should give you really nice smooth video, especially when walking. Um, I did try it with this just for jokes. You probably don't need a stabilizer, but problem with camcorders is it just did not fit on the mount properly. So um, I did use it, I just get it with some zip ties and it actually did work really well because this is really light um, and had no issues uh, running that as well. Um, let's talk about uh, audio. Oh, just before I do that, so this Zion Crane comes with a very, very nice piece of kit. You've got the full box there, nice carry handle, and then you get, which I wasn't really expecting, because it's not the most expensive of gimbals out there, um, you get this nice little travel case. I may or may not take this because it's just simply so, uh, so sort of big and bulky, but it does protect it really nice. Uh, you can see it does fit in there, all nice cutouts. It just goes in there nicely. You've got a lot of little extra things, but when you think about it, throwing this in between your clothes compared to taking all this, it is quite a bit bigger. And um, especially when you're traveling overseas, kind of sometimes depending on who you're flying with, uh, your luggage can be uh, quite restricted on the weight you can take. Uh, moving on to our audio. Uh, this is the Audio Technica. I don't even know what model it is. This is the ATR3350IS. I've used these for years and years now. This is what I'm using now. I always keep a spare one on hand. I think they're like $40, $50 from PC Case Gear. I just like to keep one spare because I've had issues where sometimes I run over it with the gaming chair, the cast wheels, and I do find them a little bit fragile where the audio ca or cable leads in and out to the control box and to sort of the mic head as well. So once that snaps, you pretty much can't use it. It just sort of breaks internally as they are such fine little wires because you do get a six meter cable. Uh, so once it does sort of break, every time you move, you get this static. So I really keep a spare one and for 50 bucks, I just think it's worth that. Um, I'm not sure if that's just an issue on how they're made, but I'm assuming if I had any lengthy one here, it's just really hard to try and keep the six meter cable uh, not being stepped on and things like that. So I just keep a spare one of those and they just take a little battery, just slightly bigger than a watch battery, which is nice. Another audio uh, piece of gear I have here, I've been using these for a while, I think it's pronounced on Boya, B-O-Y-A. Uh, this is like 130 bucks delivered Australian off eBay. I use these for, uh, don't really use them at home. I don't use like the, um, the shotgun, sort of the hot shoe or the cold shoe mounts like this on top of the, um, on top of the camera. I much prefer to use like a lapel mic like this, but I have used these at events and I really like the idea of you can slide it out of the stabilizer and you can just hold it like a normal microphone. Um, so if you are sort of interviewing someone, it does come with a, which is nice, it comes with a, it is XLR only, but they have added a uh, XLR, if I can get this to plug in, XLR to 3.5 mil 
Yeah, so 3.5 mil to XLR. So GH5 has no XLR unless you buy the uh, XLR module, which is quite expensive. I can just run this 3.5 straight into the uh, into the GH5, and I can also extend it with other uh, with other XLR cables, which I do keep on hand. And it's just a nice little microphone to interview people. I did this a few times at PAX a few years ago, and the audio is really good. Especially when you're in like a large area where there's lots of crowds like packs or comedy sex, there's a lot of background noise. Being a, the uh, condenser mic, it really just picks up what's around you, which is really nice. And it also comes with a, um, I'm gonna call them my dead, dead cat. It's got, I think I may have taken it out. Yeah, oh no, there's one here. So dead cat, it's kind of like the wind sort of protector. Probably don't really need that at Computex. Um, you're still gonna get a slight bit of background noise. You can't help that. And then you get some extra accessories like some uh, spare sort of stabilizer bits because I've had on uh, not this brand but other ones in the past. These do eventually corrode. And you also get a, uh, a little thing, a 6.3 millimeter plug to the uh, 3.5. But yeah, very nice little unit, and it's just good to be able to uh, walk around and carry it like a normal broadcasting uh, microphone. Um, some other little things that I'm just sort of going to go through. I'm not going to go through everything. There's probably other things I have missed out uh, before. Uh, I just recently picked up this. This is the Peak Design Capture Pro. It's just a little clip. I saw it online, and I thought that looks pretty cool. It's a little clip to mount your camera on, and you can uh, screw this onto your belts or your camera strap. And literally, once I say it's on your, sorry, your bag strap like this, your camera can just clip in and then your camera can just hang on it off your belt wherever this will clip on. And then you've got a quick release and you just pull off your camera. Now, I was a bit skeptical about how well it worked because I didn't want a GH5 with that lens just falling off. But pretty much everyone I've seen have not had an issue with a device just suddenly falling off. So I don't know if I'll use that. I think it was like a hundred bucks, but it's definitely something I will, um, I will think about it's um it's going to be interesting because using a using a gimbal um they don't have a quick release mount for the gimbal so once i got my gh5 on here it's going to be hard to use my gh5 for anything else other than using it on the gimbal and video so if i want to take pictures i really don't feel like unscrewing this because every time you put your unit back on you need to sort of stabilize it so you need to pretty much stand it up and you need to get your camera sitting on here and this can, this should be able to stand up straight with your camera on without falling at all. So you've got knobs to adjust it here, um, here, the one on the, the camera mount and then on top. So I need to get that right. So I don't want to do that every time I want to say, take my camera off to use it for something else. So I don't know if I will be taking it off there and putting it on here all the time. Um, other things I picked up is a, uh, normally I just throw on a power board, an Australian power board because being Australian, all my uh, power sources are Australian. I picked up one of these, I think it was like 40 bucks. It's the uh, Orico uh, sort of power board. They do a lot of things like USB, um, AC power things. So this is a two standard AC 240 volt um, plugs, 10 amps, and it's got one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. I thought it had six, but it's got five USB. Now these all run at 2.4 um, amps, which is um, pretty good, pretty much one of the highest you'll get. And because I wanted USB, because a lot of things I have need uh, USB power only. So this is the charger for the uh, Zion gimbal that needs uh, USB only. So I can chug that in, uh, chuck that in there. My phone uses, uh, of course, USB to charge and a few other things. And just one thing to look at when you are purchasing power boards and things like that, just make sure the voltage range import is AC. So this is 100 to 250. So I'll be fine to plug this in uh, a, a Taiwanese port. Just make sure you, um, you grab plenty of little adapters as well. So this will just simply go from Australian. Pretty sure this is the standard, it's the same as US as well. And that'll just simply go in there. So now I've got two there and I probably shouldn't need any more than two, but I just throw in an extra one as well. So that'll give me three ports. So if I'm in the bathroom and I need something that needs standard Australian AC, and then I got this one that has the two here. So charging my laptop and things like that. Now talking about laptop, um, I do use a laptop. And another thing that I really wanted for the camera bag was have a, a laptop compartment because I do take my laptop everywhere with me because I do edit a lot, a lot of photos and edit videos on the fly. So I've had this for a while now. It's getting pretty old. This is the Acer Nitro um, gaming laptop. Apparently it's um, black edition or something. I'm not sure sort of what sort of uh, sort of road they were going down towards that. But it is nice, it is relatively thin, which I do like, and it was really, really cheap. I think about a year or so ago, I think I paid just over a thousand bucks for it. It does have a GTX 960M, of course, being the mobile, and it's got an i7, uh, so it does have the eight core 16 threads and 16 gigs of RAM, which I wanted to. Most of the laptops around then only have eight gig, and I do use this for all my videos, After Effects and all that, which is nice. So it's a nice little beastly laptop being quite thin as well. Um, other things I throw in, just random adapter cables, 
uh, normally display port cables. Uh, I do have a few audio ports like male male 3.5 and male female 3.5. And also pack in a few of these extra or one extra of these figure eight AC cables. So things like your GH4 charger uses a figure eight cable and you might have a few other things that have um, that have the figure eight cable as well. But I think that's pretty much it on this video. I just wanted to go through all the stuff I do have. The only thing I do, don't have, which I would have liked is the second GH5 battery. Um, I just got the one that came with it. I'm contemplating whether or not to pick up another one, but it is $110 for another battery. Uh, the battery isn't as good as the GH5, uh, but you'll still be able to get a few hours worth. So for me, I'm not constantly um, at Computex as media doing just full on day coverage. So I'll probably only be able to get a few videos in of a few boosts. Um, I am with them, we'll take uh, the whole time. So when I get a free time, I'll probably uh, jut over uh, companies like ASRock, I am using their board in my thermal we'll take build and uh, Enzo Tac as well and things like that. So I'll try and do quick videos on their boosts as well. So I probably don't need two, uh, two full batteries as well. Anyway, that's pretty much it for this video. I wanna thank you guys for watching and stay tuned for next time.